Welcome to another SMA video for home inspectors. This video is about the weep screen. We will look at the purpose of the screen, where it is used, code requirements, and variations. The SMA is aware that as a home inspector, you are charged with great responsibility. Your report will likely be scrutinized by others. We also know your report is typically limited to only what you can see. We want to help you with a fair report to the seller and buyer of single family homes with stucco. The weep screed for stucco was invented in 1952 by an architect working for the Los Angeles Office of the Federal Housing Administration, or FHA. Because it was first required to be on a home to qualify for an FHA loan, it developed the nickname FHA screed. This innovative weep screed proved to be an economical solution to an occasional issue. When water was applied over framing and then allowed to extend to the earth, occasionally through capillary action, water would wick up through the plaster. If the ground was laden with salts, it could become a problem. The weep screed quickly and inexpensively solved this occasional issue. The weep screed was so successful it became part of the building code in 1970. While it may not be critical to a successful stucco installation, the weep screed is required by code for stucco on framed walls. The need for the screed can be controversial. Most stucco experts understand that the majority of rainwater is shed at the surface and only incidental water typically gets past the stucco. It is this small amount or incidental water travels down, typically escapes out through the stucco as a vapor. However, good design and under worst case scenarios, water might reach the bottom and needs a place to weep out. The shape of the weep screed can be a V-nose or can be a casing bead with holes. Even the continuous insulation stucco known as one coat stucco uses a modified weep screed for, to encapsulate the foam. While this screed is not as critical on most houses for the weep and more about the separation from the soil to prevent decay, the screed serves its named function more on what we call podium or pedestal construction. These are framed walls that sit atop large concrete walls, such as parking garages for condominiums. This framed wall, unlike a house, is tall and generally has many openings or places to let water in. The weeping behind the stuck was more critical on these type of structures, particularly in wet regions of the country. The designers often do not like the visual impact of the weep screen, so they may direct the contractor to run the building paper onto the concrete to make the stucco look continuous and uniform. The problem is the cement plaster will bond to the concrete, and this makes a great water seal. This essentially cuts off the weep and forces the water back up under the building paper. This can and has resulted in water intrusion issues. This Seattle condominium is an example where owners wondered why the carpet on the outer walls would get wet after a heavy rain. The designer felt a reveal would be enough of an escape for the water, but in actuality, water was more likely to find its way into the joints. Inspectors could tap on the stucco wall and the sounds would be very different from stucco on framing to stucco on concrete. A few notes about weep screed and stucco. First, weep screed is not required or even needed on stucco over concrete or masonry walls. For framed walls on concrete, the code wants four inches of clearance. In many cases, that four inches will not be there. While you should note this in your report, it does not mean a failure or problem has or will occur. The code also states that between the screed and paved surfaces there should be two inches of clearance. However, it's not uncommon to see this clearance also violated. In many cases, this condition will appear in protected areas from rain and water. While noting the condition is certainly appropriate, you should ask yourself, is it a real concern or creating an issue? Since weep screeds allow water to exit, there are other areas that can rise concerns, such as where stucco soffits return or where stucco sits atop a stone or brick wainscot. The issue is often, should there be a weep screen or metal flashing to allow water to weep out? The code does not mandate this 
and many times it may not be needed. The need for flashing or weep at these locations is predicated on a couple of factors. The first is the location of exposure to wind-driven rain. Will the wall be subjected to wind-driven rains? In much of the southwest, there is typically no need for weep at these locations. The next issue is, can water get in and where will it get in at? For example, this home is in Southern California, and if the stuck was properly applied, the only point of water would be at the cap. And this inspector noted the cap, while it's hard to see from this picture, provides a good seal to keep water out. As such, there's no need to have a drip or weep screen here. However, this wall is on the coast and subject to frequent wind driven rains. And flashing to discharge water was installed, and while not required, it's a good practice. Inspectors should be on the lookout for signs of problems. An example would be this stucco home. While a lack of a drip screed may seem to be the problem, it's far more likely the parapet cap is leaking, causing the wood to twist and crack the stucco. For more information on parapets, visit the SMA Home Inspector's video on parapets. This brief presentation on codes and stucco systems is brought to you by the SMA members and these regional stucco groups. Please review other SMA videos to learn more.